Because, I mean, I can set them loose on the trampoline. And it's like a kitty trampoline. I say that and people will be like child neglect, but I can set them loose on the <laughs> trampoline. I'm just, I'm curious what kind of parent you would say that you are. I mean, I think it's changed a lot since we've had our second, like our first big man. I was like, okay, we've got to do everything completely right. And we've got to have the naps down. We've got to have feeding times down. There's a schedule, hard boundaries. And I'd say since we've had the second I've kind of like let up a lot, <laughs> not so much on like boundaries. When we have a boundary and we set it, this is to keep you safe. There's no exception here. You have to follow the rule. And that's where I can kind of get like more strict is enforcing the boundary. I've let other things slide a lot just because it's hard when you have two. One is hard as well, but like two just really ups the ante because you've got two different dynamic personalities that you're working with. I'm trying not to irritate people because I don't want two people throwing tantrums and then me being like, ah, I've let up a little bit. Yes, we can do snacks and yes, we can watch more shows that I've gotten more lenient on. But as far as like hard boundaries, when it comes to like safety, I mean, I have to enforce those pretty strictly and they don't really have a choice, but I'll give them an option. I'll be like, this is essentially the framework and you can pick the decision within balance of like, hey, I'm just saying you, you feel like you can reason with them at this point still. I can, I can now that they're, I can reason with my four-year-old a lot more than my two-year-old. I'll say that. But the two-year-old, if I give him options the fourth or fifth time during the day that I've given him, like, you can do this or you can do this. He's more willing to accept like A or B as opposed to like beginning of the day. It's a little harder to reason with my two-year-old. But my four-year-old, he gets it now. I think because he's only really ever been given the like framework and the choices within. So he doesn't really have an option to like go outside right. of the framework. I mean, he does, he's four, he's like pushing boundaries, which is totally normal and healthy. And I just have to remember that because sometimes it's easy to get triggered by like little children where you're like, oh my gosh, sure. I was, I was never allowed to do this as a kid. Like you wouldn't imagine. So I have to catch myself and that, that part's really hard to do. You're in the middle of a meltdown and it's like, okay, they've only been alive for 24 months their brain is not fully developed. Like I cannot reason with you and it makes sense to you. But and they can't language wise, they can't explain things to you either when they're frustrated or something's not working out. I mean, adults have a hard time doing that, but <laughs> you know, that's gotta be kind of hard to do. And I, I'm asking you not just because this is small talk or anything, because this is going to lead into in a few minutes, our main topic for the podcast tonight how and what you're doing and the why on social media. But I'm going to ask one more parent question yeah. of you. Love it. Before we get into that. Do you have any other like adult interaction during the day? <laughs> like it, here's why I ask. And I, you wonder why I, I've I, been I, so like anxious to do the podcast. It's like, this is it. <laughs> this is it for me. So, when when my kids were born and I had a I was very fortunate at the time that I had transitioned out of my basically office job into right before creating my own like photography business to where I had a lot of really flexible hours and I could I was home with my kids most of the time so I was kind of like that stay home stay at home dad for a very long time and the hardest part for me, as much as I'm an introvert and I don't want to interact with other people, especially people that I know, but there were, it just got to the point to where when you're just around your kids every, all day, every day, there was really no other adult conversation or interaction that I could have other than my relationships with certain Netflix shows or something <laughs> to where it's just something adult, it, whether it's trashy or not. But it was always just with my kids. And I was like, I mentally, I, I can't do that all the time. Some people can. I just, I couldn't. So I'm curious about you. Do you have any adult interactions during the day? Do you have like a mom or a parent group? Maybe, you know, it's not just a mom group. Because I was always like the one dad in a big group sometimes. I never really fit in. Um, Are you by yourself, kind of? No, I mean, so after my first... I wasn't really by myself because I went back to working like really quickly after I had him. 
there was no kind of like long extended maternity leave. So I went back into working and then I was surrounded by my coworkers who some of them I really enjoyed. And then the other ones, I was just like, this is absolute, this is chaos. Like I'd rather socialize with my newborn than like talk to you about your spreadsheet and Excel problems. So I definitely had more of like an adult community after then. My second one though was really hard because we don't have family in town. Like it's literally us. Like it is us or bust. It's our nuclear family. And when I had, well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice, but then I'll see like other people who have like their parents over every day. And I'm like, you guys can go to target by yourself. (laughs) You can just be like, give and take. You can just be like, hey, watch them while I go like move this stuff and like do this. So, I mean, that would be nice, but it's been good having like a step back just because we can focus on our immediate family, our immediate needs. But no, my second, I mean, it was tough because he was born 2020. He was my 2020 pandemic baby. And then I came out of that and like nobody wanted to play. All, All the moms in anywhere we're like uh no like everybody's kind of sick and like covid's going on which like i totally get but all the library programs were shut down and i had left my job any kind of socialization i was hoping to get with other moms was completely gone so right that was kind of tough but luckily i've got a neighbor three doors down she's like exact same age she has two boys um so her and I like formed this awesome friendship. So I've got her. um, And then since my young or my oldest has been going to like nursery school three times a week, just for a couple of hours, I've made some good mom friends through there. The only thing about that is like, we're from all over around the area. So I'm not sure how long those will go on as our kids go to like different elementary schools and stuff. But it's good just to get you through the day because I can text them and I'll be like, Oh my gosh, this tantrum, can you believe? Yeah, they get right. it. I don't I don't even know who I like vent to. It's basically like I have a few friends on Instagram, can you believe? And they're there for me too, which is really nice. It's like this weird community that I did not think would ever exist because right. I'm not active on like my personal social media channels whatsoever. I just kind of started it. Hey, here's like what me and my kids are doing. And like, this would be a fun little vlog essentially for them to go back to one day and be like, oh, look at all the fun stuff we did. And then it turned into something completely different once this community started forming, which was incredible because I was not expecting that. I was like, social media is the worst, the absolute worst. You do have the people that are the absolute worst still in your, they're commenting, they're like messaging, you know, everything. But I found like a really great group of people. I don't know how else our paths would have ever crossed 